Today, I'm going to talk to you about clairgustance. It's psychic taste. It's the ability to taste a substance without putting anything in your mouth. The essence of the substance is being perceived and experienced through the soul senses. I hope you like today's session. So clairgustance um, is a bit refined. It doesn't happen a lot but it can happen. And so I want to talk to you about it because you can develop it. And you also want to make sure you don't miss an opportunity when the experience happens to you. Of course, just this morning, I woke up from a dream where I was tasting a Boston cream donut. Now, you know, it was really a fabulous dream. There were all these donuts to choose from. I do like donuts, but the Boston cream was the one that I had tasted and the flavor, it was so spot on, right? So I woke up in that kind of foggy place out of the dream and I was like, all right, what's the message? I have friends that used to say, do you look for messages everywhere? And I was like, yeah, I do. I really do. Because I think that the nature of being alive is that we are not here on our own, that we're navigating this experience with help from the other side, from our own higher self connection. There's usually signs and things mean things. I think many things mean things. I have yet to find something that doesn't mean something. <laughs> anyway, so there I was with my Boston cream donut and the full experience was going on. I was totally tasting it. It was totally yummy and no calories. Sweet. So I woke up out of the dream and I was like, all right, what's the meaning behind this? And people, it was as simple as this, the Boston, part of the Boston cream. I have to go to Boston and I was recently in Boston, I need to kind of consider all the things that I need to have happen there and how grateful I am to be, you know, so close to Boston. So it was as simple as that, but it was definitely the dream reminding me to line everything up so that I get the full experience while I'm there and to plan ahead and plan accordingly. And so it was just a little, you know, tap on the shoulder to remind me that if I want to take advantage of my time in the city, I need to plan plan ahead. Otherwise, I'll have some missed opportunities. And so sometimes I do put planning off or I don't think things through. And this was a little jog from my higher self. I don't think it really was from spirit. To me, it was my higher self connection coming forward to say, listen, you've got to really chew on this <laughs> so that you can come out of it with a really good taste in your mouth. It is my experience that when we get a taste seemingly out of nowhere that comes to our experience, it is being used to either trigger a memory or inform us of something. And it's your job to pay attention, notice it's randomly coming from seemingly nowhere, and understand what is the message for you. Like with my own first example, I want you to think about your dreams. Notice if you have any tastes that are really strong, that show up in your dream time. And then follow the trail of that taste, that flavor, that food, that drink. Follow it to the message that might be coming from your own soul to yourself as unconscious material tries to play out in your mind. So often in dream time, so much is happening. One of the things that happens is that our own unconscious material is coming to bubble up to our conscious mind as a gift to say, chew on this, look at this, process this. You know, this is what's going on for you now. So when you're noticing that you're having this psychic sense of Claire Gustin's come forward, don't diminish it. I really want you to pay attention to your dreams, set the intention that I'm going to dream, set the intention to have experiences of Claire Gustin's before you go to bed, say thank you, thank you in advance, because then you're helping co-create. And then notice what the taste is trying to relay to you, whether it's a memory that you can embark on for whatever reason, maybe be greater understanding at this point in your life, or perhaps to inform you of something up and coming, like for me with the Boston and the Boston trip. I think you'll have a great time with this. Maybe keep a dream journal. Dream journals are always a great idea because so much, especially if you're in a very vivid dreamer or a lucid dreamer, this is another great playground scape, if you will, for all the spiritual connections and experience. 
You know, when people have passed, they often do what's called visitation during a dream. The dreamscape is very close to that of the deceased. And so a lot of times loved ones that have crossed appear in our dreams. And if you can have interaction or if they seem to be specifically talking to you, it could be a visitation. It could also happen if you just see them doing things. There could be a message in that. But what I want to remind you is if they come with a flavor or a taste or there's an experience, perhaps the dream is asking you to notice the contact and the content of the information that's occurring. Maybe they're trying to come and tell you how they're doing or they're relaying memory. Listen, you know what I have to tell you sometimes? We're so hilarious. We think that we're constantly thinking of our loved ones on the other side with our memories. And spirit is like saying us, and who do you think is putting that memory in your mind in the first place? Spirit's like, you think you're walking down memory lane? I'm walking down memory lane and I'm sending you those memories. So sometimes notice if you're just kind of going along and you're thinking of your loved one and you can't help think about something they made. My grandmother made the best homemade chicken noodles and I can still taste the flavor of that and the density of the homemade noodles. I haven't tasted this for like, what, 50 years, but it's right there, like yesterday. When I can vividly taste that and bring her to mind, I am also entering and can enter into relational conversation with her and communication with her by just imaging and remembering her chicken noodle. The same with my father I've mentioned before, you know, his famous banana bread recipe. We all have the copies. I think he told each of us a little different way to make it or didn't. You know, sometimes in remembering that experience or the smell of the bread baking, I can also bring him closer to me when I have conversation on other things. So this goes both ways with the taste. I can either have a random taste show up in my mouth where it's like, oh, there's the chicken noodles. Grandma wants to talk to me on the other side. Or I can sit and think of my father's banana bread and call him to mind and then open up the dialogue and open up in conversation and lean into more ways about psychic communication, clairsensation, any of the others. Just realize that it's kind of a two-way street. We can use it as a calling card to call on our loved one, but we could also be getting it from them. They're using it as a calling card to call on us. So here's the important part. If you cannot get a taste or the desire for a certain food off of your mind, like if you're obsessed, I've got to go make grandma's favorite this evening, or I just can't get those full experience of that out of my mind, it could be that a loved one is trying to reach you and they're putting that desire for that food or the memory of the food or the thought of that food over and over and over and over again in your mind. Yes, spirit can nag us. They do it all the time. Sometimes it's repetitive phrase, but that'll be Claire audience. I'll talk about that soon. But this, in regards to Claire Gustans, it can happen the same way with repetitive taste that we just can't get out of our head that we have to make this food. It could be that they're trying to connect with us. So I invite you when that is happening, that not only when you're making the food, are you calling them to mind, but I ask you to literally call them to mind. I call on my loved ones on the other side all the time to help me make food. Like, what should I add in? here? Or what would make it better? And I open up my heart and mind to, you know, their input. I just want to remind you that sometimes if this repetitive taste is coming over and over to you, you may not be the one that's really desiring it. It could be that spirit's trying to use it as a contact method, especially if you shared, you, you enjoyed sharing meals or drinks or creating together. And that I think is really important. So predominantly what I've just spoken to has to do with if spirit is trying to make a contact with you. But also, as I have mentioned, it could be that it's something is happening to inform you of something, like I said in the dream. So those two things are key. Now, there is something else that has happened in my experience, and you might have it too. When I was doing a read on a loved one that had crossed, when I do mediumship, I use everything and anything to get in touch with a loved one. And they'll use anything and everything that they can to send me the information. It all happens on a vibrational plane, which is just energy, which is spirit, but it can translate through the ethers in a way that I can comprehend it. Sometimes spirit on the other side is only good at certain ways of sending information, just whether it's because that's how long they've been there, or that's just kind of this miscommunication that happens between us. But anyway, there was this one young man who didn't really want to tell me how he had passed. And I kind of had a feeling that it was, he had taken his own life. And sure enough, when I was asking him, but he wasn't saying, 
dang. Because he was embarrassed. Yes, you can be on the other side and be embarrassed. All of a sudden, it was my mouth was full of the taste of medicine. And so I knew immediately that he had ingested all these pills. And so it was a way for me to get information. Now I'm asking him and he's like, yeah, yeah, I put those there in your mouth so that you could say it. Because I didn't want to say it. This was the easiest way for him to say it. I just want you to know that that could be an experience also that occurs in regards to relaying information by way of taste. Okay, so I told you about the good Boston cream donuts. That was really lovely, right? But there, <laughs> there are times in my life when I have had dreams of the most foul flavor happening in my mouth. Use your imagination and you are right on. That is what I've woken up and had that flavor in my mouth. I, of course, am going immediately like, whoa, what is the message from my soul to myself here? This wasn't a spirit, did not put this foul taste in my mouth. This was my soul to myself. I had to sit there and go, okay, have you been doing the last few days? Have you been eating shit? Have you been, you know, speaking shit? Have you been, you know, this kind of stuff. Also, it could be something is a foul taste in your mouth because maybe you've made a decision and, and you don't like it. You didn't live up to your own truth. You didn't tell someone else your mind and so you're full of shit. And so I have to look at my life to go, where am I full of shit? And this has been, I swear, it's my cosmic joke to myself that I would actually play this upon myself to have this experience because I cannot run from my dream time. I cannot run from my soul's journey. And so some of of it is to look very clearly at, you know, where's the shit in my life. So I hope you never, ever, ever have that experience. I hope you only have Boston cream donut dreams. <laughs> Okay, so there you have it. Claire Gustens can either be to trigger a memory, to have connection, communication about something to help bring some awareness to your mind, whether it's a loved one on the other side or your own soul's journey. Like, oh, it's time to unravel that content that you couldn't approach at a younger age and now it's time to look at it. Or, you know, it's to inform you of something, your soul to yourself or... Uh, another spirit informing you of something through the experience of taste, something that you've not physically put in your mouth, but something that is coming to you very tangibly otherwise. So how can you develop this? There's a few ways you can play games with this. You can imagine in your meditation time, really specifically send a certain taste, really picture it and taste it in your mouth and taste it in your experience, salivate over it and send it out to a loved one, experience them coming near so that you you can have more communication connection on the various other ways as well. You can sit in your meditation time and just cast a net out to your loved one and say, you know, someone show up with a sense of taste and see what taste comes to you. Your intention is clear that you only want to get in touch with loved ones that have crossed family members or uh, friends, see what flavors come forward to see who they're connected to. Another thing that you could do is I have my friend, Stephanie, she and I play games a lot. And I think I might do this to my other friend, Russ, this week. I'm going going to say, okay, listen, tell me what time you're going to eat. Don't tell me what you're eating. I'm going to tune in to you. In other words, I'm going to close my eyes in the moment that I know Russ is eating. I'm going to picture him somewhere eating. And then I'm going to see what flavors come to my mouth to see what it is he is eating. And then I'll call him, compare my notes to his experience of what he was eating. And when you do this, go gentle with yourself. Give it a few tries, different occasions, different meals, and see how it goes. And the focus is really about having them enjoying their meal and then you're breathing in the smells and you're tasting the tastes and all the different flavors and see what comes to you just in your closing your eyes and imagining them eating and what it is they're eating and the flavors that you're experiencing. See what comes to your taste buds and then compare notes with them and then do the same. See about you sending your flavors to them because sometimes we're really good receivers and sometimes we're really good senders. But just try it on a few different occasions and see how fun that would be. You could also say, I'm thinking of a specific flavor and I'm going to send the flavor taste to you. You can do like a fruit, narrow the scope so that it's not this wide array, right? This whole smorgasbord of food. Just work on fruit or work on vegetables or whatnot and really enjoy yourself. But that's a fun way to develop it. Again, it can be fleeting like a sense of smell, but it is important because we have vivid memories tied to taste. Oftentimes, spirit might use this, your soul might use this 
sense of flavor and sense of taste to get a message to you. And it's up to you to unravel it. But I definitely encourage you to play the game with friend or family member, especially at a distance to say, okay, what am I eating? What am I drinking? And see how it goes. Well, my friends, can't believe I told you about the, the foul taste that had happened. Isn't that horrible? I'm like, oh no, not another nightmare like that. And I'm always like, oh crap, all pun intended. But anyway, just I'm me, right? And you're you and I adore you and I'm grateful for you. And I'm glad that you're on this journey with me. Together we are as you work to explore and build upon your own psychic development and your soul's awareness and how it might enhance your day-to-day -day life. I do this because I'm, you know, doing my best for a soul's journey and healing and purpose and to encourage spiritual growth and health. I hope you have enjoyed today's session. As always, thanks for tuning in. Legally speaking, this podcast is presented solely for educational, spiritual, and entertainment purposes. It is not intended as a substitute for medical diagnosis, treatment, or the advice of a physician, psychotherapist, or other qualified professional. You should not use this information to diagnose or treat a health problem or condition. Always check with your doctor. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. If you've enjoyed this episode with Constance Mesmer, We'd like to encourage you to continue your spiritual journey with this next episode.